Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and this is a little uh, update and talk about propagation. As we change season, uh, one of the things that people notice is that uh, very often higher frequencies are open much later at night. And it's easy to, um, you know, propagation and understanding how it works is something that, you know, requires time. It's, it's uh, in itself, it's, it's a very fascinating and, and very complex um, thing to uh, know what frequency will propagate to what area of the world at a certain time. Um, so imagine the engineers, imagine the people working at, uh, you know, big radio stations, big shortwave broadcasters how they have to take into account so many things, understanding what frequency might be the best for target area. Uh, one of the things that we see often is people are amazed that in like you know very late evening there are signals and higher frequencies like you know 15 or 17 megahertz. And the notion that you have to understand here is that it's not because when it's dark over your head, that the signal has been propagating in darkness. Um, it's something difficult to grasp as we, you know, if it's midnight where you are and you hear a signal. And I'll take the example, in the Facebook group, somebody was mentioning that they received on the East Coast uh, Radio New Zealand that was on 15720. And of course, East Coast, 04 UT, midnight, it's darkness. But... When that happens, remember that New Zealand has most of the path in the Pacific Ocean is all in sunlight. And even the west coast of the United States, it's still not totally dark yet. So imagine that the big chunk of the signal goes through sunlit side of the earth. And only a very small portion goes through nighttime to reach the east coast at that time. So that's why that high frequency propagates. Because where it bounces off the ionosphere, it's bouncing off where it's still daylight. And so it might be dark where you are, but it's not dark for the majority of the path. This, for example, here in the East Coast is a summer thing. Because when we get into winter with the very long nights, there's so much darkness bat that is between New Zealand and East Coast at the same time that now it just doesn't work anymore because the signal on 15 megahertz goes through much darkness. Another phenomena that a lot of people uh, have a hard time, and I almost every year I get a comment or two on that, is I can't believe 20 meter band is open to Europe in the middle of the night in North America. And it has to do with the fact that when European signals want to transmit to North America, say at, let's say it's 05 UTC, 04 UTC, that's midnight, 1 a.m. in the East Coast. In Europe, uh, well, you know, it's early morning. The sun has risen and it's daytime um, in, in a, a big chunk of Europe at that time. And, of course, early risers and people that go to work often. That's what happens. You hear them saying, hey, I'm doing a few contacts before I'm going to work. Um, are heading to North America. But you might be thinking, yeah, but the Atlantic Ocean's in darkness. I don't understand how it can propagate. It can because if you propagate towards the north in Europe, it crosses the North Pole. And at this time of year, and in June and July, the North Pole is in daylight 24 hours. It is a path for higher frequencies. So if a European signal broadcasts towards the North Pole, it's crossing the North Pole in daytime. And so even though it's dark in North America, signal makes it because in, especially in June, um, you know, the, um, the, the area of North America that is still in, that is almost perpetually in daylight is quite, goes quite far to the south of the uh, northern uh, parts of North America. So at that time, it means that most of the path, once again, is in daytime, even though us in the mid-latitude, lower latitudes are in total darkness. So it's another way to have 20 meter propagation. And it's not just 20 meters. If propagation is good, if solar activity rises, uh, it could even be 17 and 15 meters that will propagate that way. 
So it's not a surprise that 20 meters might be open all night in the summertime. So, you know, it's a question of daytime, nighttime, where it is dark, where it is daytime. How much darkness does the signal has to go through before it, right, it gets here? How much uh, daytime pad does it have before it gets here? These are all little things that you have to take into account in understanding uh, a little more about propagation and why a signal from certain areas of the world actually propagate. You know, when Radio Australia was uh, still on, one of the frequencies that was summertime is 17795. So it could be 11 p.m. here in the East Coast, but, you know, still a little more than half of North America at 11 p.m. East Coast is still in daylight in, uh, in uh, June and July. Plus, all the Pacific Ocean is daylight, and uh, Radio Australia, well, is uh, getting into uh, is into morning there, and so the path of daylight lets seventeen seven nine five propagate into North America, uh, where even if in the East Coast it's dark, well, the majority of the path is in daylight, so that's why it's working. So it's all little things that you learn over time, and it's you know that it shows you how complex. Uh, it could be to understand why a signal propagates from one part of the world to the other and in understanding that it's not because it's dark where you are, that it's necessarily dark where the signal comes from and, and, and the other way around. Um, you might hear a signal in a low frequency and it's still, you know, the sun is, is still there, but it's because the majority of the path is in darkness, even though it's still sunny where you are, it's still daytime. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.